87% of our insecurities are instilled in us by age five, but what that, mm -hmm. but we don't have a personality until age seven. So what that means is 87% right. of our insecurities that we go through life trying to overcome aren't really ours, but rather the projection of our environments. Welcome to Parenting Intuitive Kids. I'm Katie. I am Jesse. And this is where we focus on empowering the new heart centered society that is our children. So come along with us. Katie, we're talking Hello? sports. Hello. We're, we're talking sports and competition um, yeah. is what we're going to talk today about. And so I'm excited about this. Yeah, me I know too. we both have um, different viewpoints of it, different looks mm -hmm. than what society normally brings to the table. So I'm really excited about this discussion. Yeah. And I know that if, if by any chance I'll make the observation, we do our recordings at home. We do have we do. pets and children. So the disclaimer do. is real life. And this is our inauthentic frequency. And if it's a dog barking or rooster I'm, outside. I was going to say that deep dog bark is my St. Bernard. And so, and he's huge. And so his barks are always huge too. He's, inclu um, he's included in our conversation. FYI. He's included. Mm-hmm. So, so Katie, let's, let's go ahead because this has been a topic that we mm -hmm. have talked quite a few times. We have a different yeah. approach and yet we are able to yeah. talk yeah. freely how we receive oh, yeah. it. And yeah, I want to hear from you. What, what is your approach when you have being a mother of four boys? I have four boys. Yep. And a little girl. What yep. has been your experience whenever you're being approached by other parents mm. who are asking, are your kids involved in sports? Uh, I get that question a lot, especially since there mm. are four boys. Um, <clears throat> we, we are not in organized sports, like in organized conforms, but we play a lot. I think there's a difference between play and organized sports sports. Um, and especially, and I know whenever I bring this up, it's sometimes it's a sensitive topic because you always hear parents who are our age say, I got so much fulfillment out of sports when I was a kid. And my viewpoint is, is first of all, sports were very different. I had a very different mm -hmm. perception when I had kids, you could play at what you always play. When I grew up what, growing up, you always played the sport that was in season. Now mm -hmm. your kid at the age of five has to choose a sport and that's has to be the sport they stick with. And then they have coaches, they play it year round. And so it's a different dynamic. Um, and you see that whether it's basketball, soccer, whatever your kid chooses. Um, and everybody I talk to, I mean, they say the same thing. Like I have a girlfriend whose daughter's in basketball. She plays school at high school level. And then she has, then she plays on a traveling team off season. And then she has a private coach when those two seasons aren't in practice. And the thing is, is a lot of the times now, a lot of these kids, if you haven't been playing since the age of five, you don't get accepted to the team. You don't make the team. And these are just high school level sports. And so sports now are very different than when we grew up, but the people in control of the sports now is us. And mm -hmm. so even though we want to say that we got a lot of good things from it, we instilled a very toxic level of competitiveness, I think, within ourselves, because if it hadn't been a toxic level of competitiveness, we wouldn't have seen sports, you know, kind of go to the extremes that they are now. Um, and so I always had, you know, so when I talk to my kids, especially about sports, but my kids aren't, we're not an overly athletic family. We love to go outside. We love to play. We love to ski in the winter because we live in the mountains. We love in the summers. We love to hike. We love to kayak. We love to paddleboard. We are always outside in nature. And then even in the afternoons, we like to kick the ball around as a family. We like to play badminton. We have badminton that's up in our yard every summer. Um, and so we play. I like to say we play a lot. We are a very active, physically active family, um, but we don't do a lot of um, competitive, organized sporting environments with that. Um, and like when I, and my kids and we've talked about it is that I feel in life, and this is my perception of life is that you are either in life, you are either competing with people or you are connecting with people. And I get, we live in a world that sometimes competition is required right? But I think in life, you're either competing or you're connecting. And if you're connecting, you cannot be competing. And if you are competing, you cannot be connecting. And you can say, well, like, yeah, they may be competing against a team, but they're connecting as, as a group, right? The team itself is right. connecting as a group. Um, 
And I think that what that is, it's, it's a group of people who've come together to form an alliance to compete against other people. So it's still, it's you, you've made your alliance in order to compete. And to me, when you are in a state of competition, you are always in a state of lacking, right? Because I always like to joke. I like to joke with my husband all the time. I don't compete with anybody because I don't want to be anybody and nobody can be me. Believe mm -hmm. you and me, I am not competing with anybody. Right. And I never, I never have, even when someone has put me in a competitive environment, I am the first to like, listen, I'm piecing out because I, I'm not, I know my worth and I'm not competing, right? I've always been that person to kind of step out um, of competitive environments, whether it be in social situations or, you know, there have been in work environments where I have stepped up to show my worth in order mm -hmm. to win the promotion or that sort of stuff. But when it comes to things that you don't really need a level of competition, I generally step out because I, I know who I am. Um, and I always tell my kids, you know, I think the most important saying that we can say to ourselves and everybody needs to word it in the word that they, that is comfortable to them. But I say it all the time, especially when my kids are locked in the car with me and they can't get away because I'm driving is I like to say on repeat loud for them to hear is I am who I am. And just as I am, I am enough. Right. And so I think this, this very toxic level of competition that we are stemming in our children. And it makes them anxiety. It gives them such anxiety and stress. Mm -hmm. And then when we constantly have our kids on the run from activity after activity, after activity, they don't know how to be, they don't know how to shut off that thinking brain. And when we are in the state, I like to tell my kids all the time, we have two sets of brains. We have our thinking brain and then we have our quiet mind. Our thinking brain is always in kind of this pain body energy because you're always either in the past or you're in the future. But when you are in the quiet brain, you're, you're kind of more in the state of the now and the now is a very peaceful state. And then in the body is no pain. And so when you are actually in the physical, now you have no stress, you have no anxiety, you you're, you're grounded and you're rooted. And so I always, and we try to live as much as we can in the present state. And so I always keep trying to pull my kids back to that state of living in the now of living with connecting to people rather than competing with people. Because when you are connecting, you're living, you're moving from a space of love rather than fear. And so that is, that's, that is my perception on sports. I know people probably think it's not that deep, but to me, everything is that deep. I can't hear you, JC. I think you're muted. Yes, I was. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> no, I okay. thought, oh my goodness, did my system just mess uh, up? No, so, but I think it's a, it's a wonderful observation to hear your perspective and also to hear the audience perspective on how yes. they handle when they are in encounter with a simple question, are your kids involved in sport and why, yes. why are they not? Because there's yeah. a lot of why not that people innocently or judgmentally want yeah. to know beyond what is their responsibility to know <laughs> how yeah. each family dynamic works. For me, uh, personally, I've experienced that I have one more sports inclined child yeah. versus another one. And uh, very early on at age three, my oldest showed that she wanted to be involved with one specific sport. And yes, she had a private coach at age three, but it was wow. out of her own initiative. And she yeah. was looking at her daddy playing a sport. And because she continued asking, we simply supported her. We supported yeah. her initiative. As soon as she started showing that she was no longer interested, that was it. That was it. And the difference was you were, she was leading it and you were following versus the correct. parents leading it. Correct. Right? Correct. And yeah. that has been my approach with everything from homeschooling, yeah. from whatever habits or hobbies they, they come through in different phases. Yeah. I mean, that has been my approach. Okay. Is this for your benefit? Is it bringing joy to yourself? Yes. Okay. Let's look where we can be. And the moment, the moment she will start being too hard on herself, I'm like, okay, this is time to take a yeah. pause because inevitably the way competitions and structure sports are set up is to be overly detailed, over analytical. There's very yeah. little room for compassion, for understanding, for emotional self-regulation and, and for fun. support. It and they should be, be fun. fun. Exactly. It should and be so, nourishing rather than taking. 
And you see a lot of children in sport in in professional sport where literally it is the parent by curiously living through the child and later on the child who becomes an adult misses out on their childhood but now conscious parents as we are opening this conversation very freely very empathetically we can reflect like okay what are the interests that you have because now like you said we're no longer tied into okay this is the only sport that is accessible because this is the seasonal now you have a plethora of different sports that are accessible and maybe one day you're gonna want to go wall climbing another you want to go hiking maybe another day you're into fishing maybe another day you want to do basketball or tennis and it's all valid the the yeah. way i see it, sports it's a way of an outdoor experience to enrich their energy their yes. creativity to engage with their physical body rather than being stagnant at home in front of a screen or in their bedroom just even if it's just deep on on a book which is very enriching our physical body needs movement yeah so that's yeah. my approach about it like okay now when it becomes with a competitive i'm like oh i have a little bit knee-jerk reaction because it becomes it brings out a very toxic side yes yeah you can have a gentle we cannot shelter them in this bubble no. Of, no. of reality that competition is never going to exist or that it doesn't exist it's a matter of how are we going to handle competition is it for us to self-reflect there is room of, of uh room for improvement based on how we handle ourselves based on yeah. evaluating what are our skill sets or giving ourselves a chance to give it a try. Well, maybe some people are great at running. Some other people are not so good. Mm -hmm. And it's not that they are de defective. It's simply, okay, you have, each individual has different qualities. What are your fortes and what are not necessarily the kind of fortes for that specific sport or competition? Yeah. So I see it more, I see competition more as if we can look back as an improvement meter, okay, and then take away any self belittery, any super um, perfectionist from being imposed into <clears throat> ourselves, either self imposed or externally imposed. Yeah. That's how I, I, that's how I, it doesn't mean that, of course, at some times, yes. If you have a child and you have invested in a specific room of classes and they have come out with it, for example, I had one time, my, my oldest said, like, okay, I want to have this X amount of classes. Okay, well, this X amount of classes require commitment for you to be on time ready. It requires for you to be outside in the element, the weather, it's not in my control. And if it's hot or it's very cold, you're going to dress accordingly. You're going to hydrate yourself. You're going to bring forward. Yeah these this these are skilled this this is requirement for going to the training so just because you make one complaint or two complaints like no 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 you have to hold yourself accountable yep but to start telling kids oh you're not good enough what the yeah. heck was wrong with you what were you thinking don't you know better um maybe we should reflect how can we approach it as a parent and even as the coach, when they approach the children, how are you handling the competition? Are you being compassionate? Like, hey, it's simply the way the structure is set. One team versus another, there will be one winner because this is the way the, the game was created. And well, don't I take it personally. Sometimes it's just I, a chance for you to shine and sometimes it's the other. What it matters is that you're both having fun and coming together to just the it should, it should be more of a play it should i feel yeah. like sports should be more of a play and it should it should add to your life i think we're at least maybe this has come since i've come into my 40s that if something isn't like this is my base life if whatever comes into my life isn't nourishing it and adding mm -hmm. to it i'm just eliminating that's kind of where i am in my life we have come to this this level of toxicity of needing and everything's a mirrored image right and so these kids that need to succeed and these kids that need to win they need to succeed and they need to win generally because the parents need to succeed and the parents need mm -hmm. to win because there was a study done that was actually and it was it really kind of changed my entire perception i read it back in 2018 that said that 
87% of our insecurities are instilled in us by age five, but what that, mm -hmm. but we don't have a personality until age seven. So what that means is 87% right. of our insecurities that we go through life trying to overcome aren't really ours, but rather the projection of our environments. And mm -hmm. before under the age five, what is a project? What is your, it's your environment. It's your household. It's your parents. It's, you know, it's how they see life. It's how they move through life. And children don't learn by what we say, but rather they learn through observation and mimicry. And so if I'm not feeling enough within myself, mm -hmm. I know my children aren't going to feel enough within themselves. And so when they go onto that sports field, they're going to need to win because mm -hmm. there's a part of them that feels inadequate. And I just, I think that's where all of our competition in life, and it's not just sports, it's competition around the world. The reason why the world is the way it is, is because it is such a competitive place where people are constantly competing and they're not connecting enough. Like the world is the way it is. The reason why we have the wars and the famine, we should not have famine. We have more than enough food to provide food for every single person on this planet. But yet we have certain countries and mine, I, you know, I'm so blessed to be in one of them, but we have an abundance amount of food. And then mm -hmm. we have countries with such a lacking amount of food. It's not because we don't have enough food to distribute equally. It's that we are more competitive and we have to control more, you know, like, and so I think this, this level of competition, even though we're discussing it on the sports field, I think it, it expands more of a collective thing. And I think if people stepped away from that competitive mindset a little bit more and became and connected rather than competed. I think the world we live in, and I think that's, it's it's actually, I think it, we are at a big transformative phase with going into age of Aquarius because age of Aquarius is humanitarians. We discussed that in the last episode. So mm -hmm. I think we're going to start seeing people connecting more and competing less. That is really what I hope, I hope for the future. I, the only sport in my house that we watch is tennis. So that's oh. the only reference where you can hear from me. It's the only one that we watch. And I love seeing how these professional tennis players, even when they are competing technically against yeah. each other, if one of them throughout the sport, through the game, through the competition, yes, there's the big, you know, emotional rush of getting that point, yeah. coming across, yeah. getting the, the rules being met or not, and this yeah. and that. But if one of them goes, it's, it's injured of either, let's say by a ball hitting them, which is very unlikely, or they twisting or whatever, if they yeah. are in need, I love it how they go ahead and mm -hmm. they're the first one, the opposite team player goes ahead and see the company like, how are you doing? They'll help how each other you? and they'll, congratulate yeah. themselves every single time they have like a handshake That's awesome. and they say you did good you did good it was amazing yeah. and they're always verbally i don't know if it's pr or not but it helps it helps for the children yeah. to see to hey see. we can be professional sports players and yes one is going to take the trophy the other one is going to get the second runner-up um acknowledgement recognition but look how they handle themselves. That's how should we handle themselves ourselves. Yeah. There's there we have strength individually, unique yes. strength. And how beautiful it is to foresee. I see this very positive in the future where we can collectively share each other's gift. Yeah. Where whichever are our strength, okay, these are the artists, these are the engineers, these are the architects, you know, and, and these are the musicians and so and so. And it's not about separation, it's about what I see is this embracing, okay, this is your highest gift, let's just bring you up here. You don't have the strength, maybe you're not a bodybuilder, it's okay, I don't need you to be a bodybuilder, I got that that strength, I can be the protector. Well, you're the one who's over there in the kitchen or over there in yeah. the farm cultivating. So it doesn't need to be that super competitive. I would love to see in the children's environment, in the children's competitive sports, that kind of um, fraternity yeah. and understanding. But most of all, I feel that just like before you get married and you get a marriage counseling so you can have a clearer understanding what marriage is going to look like. I think parents should have some kind of pre-sports counseling to yeah, understand, okay, these, these are the traits, 
when parents yeah. go overboard and this is how it affects our children and guess what studies have shown they're very likely how was your dad or your mom about sports yeah. with you how how do the little bit of that self-reflection and and if you're seeing their child really being too hard on themselves then maybe take a pause maybe consider yeah. taking a pause and open that communication the reason why we're doing the podcast is to encourage families to thrive by yeah. self-observation and to open communication this is yeah. not anything else <laughs> no we're encouraging conversation starters and um i i had a thought and i just lost it but I think, oh, one of the things like when my kids were younger and I put them in T-ball and that sort of stuff, they always used to say, the coaches always used to say that it was amazing that my kids were always like always cheered so much for the other kids that bad or whatever. And, mm -hmm. you know, something I, I don't say it anymore because it may, they've got it. But mm -hmm. when they were really young, I always used to say that we can celebrate someone else's success and it doesn't diminish our own success right because then right. i think because so many people i think they think by celebrating someone else it diminishes them and mm -hmm. but i always used to say you know we can celebrate your brothers or your friends or the other team's success and it doesn't diminish all of your own accomplishments right and so i think that's that's a big one too i think i love it i think this is a beautiful episode katie so, we we we've encompassed so. so much so i really i really 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 want to leave the note that rather than seeing sports and competition as a an energy then when unaddressed unregulated without compassion it will affect the mental health dynamic not only of the child but also of the parents so yeah. Let's reflect a little bit more how we handle the topic of sports, how we handle yeah. the topic of competition and yeah. allow them to have a better, allow our children to have a better opportunity us as parents yeah. so they can thrive in their authentic frequency rather than be a self projection of our yeah. own inner child that was not heard of or didn't play X, Y, and Z sports. Yeah. So those will be my last two cents on, on this episode. I think it's fabulous. Okay. Until next time. Thank you for listening time. today. For more information, find us at our website, parentingintuitivekids.com. And we invite you to join our newsletter for upcoming workshops, interviews, and further perks.